You don't need to buy Hamburger Helper from the grocery store ever again. It's so easy to make at home from scratch, and you can have it ready in just over 30 minutes. I'm pretty excited to show you this recipe because it's so warm and comforting for this time of year. And if you've been buying the Hamburger Helper mix from the grocery store, you're gonna ask yourself why you didn't know about this before. You probably have all the ingredients in your pantry right now and could be making this tonight. So into a large skillet, I'm gonna add a couple of spoons of oil and a pound of ground beef. The heat's on medium high, and I took that beef out of the fridge about 30 minutes ago so it would come to room temperature. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of salt, and that's not only gonna help with flavor, but it's also gonna help cook the meat a little faster. So just keep crumbling it down with your wooden spoon, and you wanna cook it until all the pink disappears. And even after all the pink is gone, don't be afraid to cook it a few minutes longer. A little more browning adds more flavor. Now we're gonna add one chopped onion, and we're gonna keep cooking it until the onions become translucent. That's gonna take about five to seven minutes, so we're just gonna keep an eye on it and make the spice mix. And for that, you mix a tablespoon of chili powder, two teaspoons of paprika, one teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of garlic powder, about a quarter teaspoon of pepper, and two tablespoons of flour. So just mix that all together and do make sure that there aren't any little lumps in there. You could vary this however you want, but this is the basic mix for Hamburger Helper. Now let's check on our beef and onions here, and it looks like those onions are becoming pretty translucent. So at this point I'm going to add two cloves of finely chopped fresh garlic, and we're going to cook that for about a minute to get rid of the raw flavor from that garlic. And now we're going to sprinkle that seasoning mixture evenly over the ground beef. And I'm going to keep cooking this over medium heat until no traces of dry flour remain. This is not only going to start cooking the flour, but it's also going to toast the spices, and everything tastes better when you cook it this way. It really helps to intensify all the flavors. Now I'm going to add three very rough tablespoons of tomato paste. And again, we're going to stir it really well for another minute or so until it's all combined. And now we're going to add two cups of beef broth, and I'm just using the kind that you get from the grocery store in a carton and one cup of milk. I'm using whole milk, but partly skimmed will work just as well. Even if you have a little bit of half and half cream that you need to get rid of, this is a perfect way to use it. Now I have to bring this to a boil, so the heat's on medium high. You can speed this up by covering it, but you also wanna be stirring it quite often right now. And as soon as you do see it start to boil, you wanna cover it with the lid, reduce the heat, and let it simmer for 10 minutes. That's going to cook out the rest of the flour and the spices, and we won't be left with a raw, mealy taste. So after 10 minutes of cooking, we're going to give it a stir. And if yours looks really soupy like this, then you're on the right track. If yours looks a lot thicker than this, then you might want to add a little bit of beef stock or water. And now we're going to stir in two cups of uncooked macaroni, so that's about half a pound. I know a lot of recipes say to cook the macaroni separately and add it in later, but washing extra dishes isn't really my jam. So that's why I love this one pot recipe. Now we're going to cover this again and let it cook for 8 to 10 more minutes. But don't be tempted to open that lid until then. Then all of that heat's going to escape and you'll mess with the flow. So only after 8 to 10 minutes do you want to open it up just to have a look. You don't want that macaroni to be 100% cooked yet, only maybe 3 quarters. And check out how amazing that is looking. Oh my gosh, guys. Now we're going to add our last ingredient, some cheddar cheese. And I'm adding about a cup here, but you can add a little more or less if you want to. And now just give it a really good stir so all that cheese melts. Of course, if you didn't want to add the cheese, you really don't have to. But honestly, guys, the cheese really does make this taste so, so heavenly. At this point, you're going to want to check it for seasoning, so you might need to add a little more salt and pepper, and then you'll want to cover it for another 5 minutes before you serve it. I know that's not going to be easy, but that's going to give the macaroni a chance to cook all the way. And most pasta dishes are better after a little rest. But the taste and texture of this hamburger helper turns out so perfect. And it wasn't even that hard to make. I bet when you make this for the first time, you'll be making it over and over again. And I love how far it stretches a pound of ground beef. You can feed quite a few people with this. All you need is a little salad on the side and you have a complete meal. Wow, how delicious is that, guys? This would be really awesome to whip up for a Super Bowl party or any type of game night, or if you ask me, any night in general. And all it took was just over 30 minutes and I only used one pot. If I do say so myself, I don't think it can get much better than that. 